Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll show you everything you need to know about Razor Class Libraries, or RCLs. A Razor Class Library is a set of Blazor components that can exist in their own project and are compiled as .NET Core assemblies with a DLL extension. RCLs can contain any Blazor components, even routable components, which we call pages. You can use RCLs to separate portions of your Blazor application into logical pieces. This can be especially helpful if you add security boundaries to them, so only certain users can access certain aspects of the application. Like all Blazor components, you can instantiate components from an RCL dynamically using Blazor's Dynamic Component component. Just look up the Department of Redundancy department. And with help from one of my OSS libraries, you can update your RCLs at runtime in place by copying them to an arbitrary folder. And that is all coming up right now, right here on Blaze a Train! So to start, let's create a new Blazor web app and call it RCL Demo. Set the interactive render mode to server and the interactivity location to global. So to this solution, we're going to add a new Razor class library project. And we're going to call it my RCL. I don't know, it just came to me. Additional information, just click Create, select the defaults. So let's take a look at the files in a Razor class library project. In the web root, we get a PNG file that's used for the demo, not necessary. We get an example JS interop JavaScript file, not necessary for anything, but if you want to know how to do uh, JavaScript interop in a Razor class library, this file is important and this file is important. You also get a component, component one razor, and a scope CSS file for it, and an imports razor, well, underscore imports, and that's the standard blazer underscore imports. You need that. But I'm going to go ahead and delete these things that we don't need, just like that. So now we're going to add a project reference from the blazer app to the razor class library. And in the components underscore imports file in the Blazor app, we'll add a using statement. Now let's add a component to the Razor class library project. So I'm going to right click, add new item, and I'm going to call it my component dot razor. Again, it just came to me. And here's the markup and code a div with a little padding, a little background color a version 1.0 string and hello from my component version version. Okay, now we should be able to just go to our home page here and add my component and run it. And there it is. Isn't that amazing, folks? All right, don't 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 go away yet. There's more. Let's modify our component to support a parameter a simple message string that we can show underneath our initial greeting. Now let's go modify home razor to support that. So when we define my component, we set the message parameter. This is a message for you. Now this might look familiar if you use third party blazer controls. They are compiled as razor class libraries and you can do the same so that you can share your RCLs or even update them while your app is running. And we'll get to that. Let's run this. There you go. Pretty simple. Now, one thing you might not know you can do in a Razor class library is make routable components, or as we call them in Blazor, pages. So let's go create a new Razor class library in here. called mypage.razor. So here it is. There's 
my page at the top there. Just an arbitrary message. Congrats, you're at my page. And just so that we know that it's rendering the current time. Now, what do we need to do in order to route to my page? Well, let's just assume that we'll be able to and go at a nav menu entry for it. So under components, layout, nav menu, we'll go down here and we'll use the same icon here because we haven't installed any other icons and we'll just go to my page. Now, if you just try this as is, it's not going to work. How do we make it work? Well, it's actually in Routes Razor. We need to add this line. Additional assemblies is a new array, and we're getting the type from my RCL, my component, and the assembly of that type. So this just has to be something that's in my RCL. It could be imports. could be that. As long as we have the assembly that this is in. Imports might be safer because you might want to add and remove components, but you'll probably never remove uh, underscore imports because that's part of the Blazor subsystem. Now let's try it. Ta-da! 71800, 7.18.07. Well, what else can we do? Let's add an event callback. Here we are. We've got a button on click. We're going to invoke this event callback and pass a string. Button clicked. So let's modify home razor to handle that. All right. So now we've got our button clicked handler passes the message. And then we're going to concoct a new message that we will show in a paragraph and that includes the date time string then up here when we define the component we say button clicked which is a parameter an event callback parameter equals button clicked so it's linked here we go click me and done now you may have done all these things in your rcls already or in, certainly in Blazor components, but I bet there's one thing I'm going to show you next that you haven't done. You may not even know that it's possible. So rather than explicitly instantiating a component, we have the option of instantiating it by type and supplying a dictionary of parameter names and values. And for that, we're going to use the dynamic component component. So let me show you how to do this. Let's go to counter razor and take it over. And I'm only taking it over because it's faster than creating a page in a nav link. Let's go down to the code block here. We have this dynamic type record. All right, so this could be a class, but I chose to use a record. And if you don't know what records are, I actually did a .NET show on this, episode 13. And it's all about records, structs, and classes, and the difference between them all. And it's in plain English. So we've got this dynamic type, right? Which takes a type and a dictionary of parameters with a string key, and the parameter is an object. Now, on initialized, we're going to add an entry from my component. That's the type that we're going to create. And the message parameter is going to be this is the first component. And the button clicked parameter is going to be an event callback, which we create and we point it to button clicked. Button clicked is our local handler right here. And then we do the same thing. We have a message from component. We show that here. And this is the secret sauce for instantiating those dynamic components. You go through that dynamic types dictionary and each one we instantiate a component by type and the parameters and those are all part of the dynamic types dictionary so let's check this out 
go to counter, give myself some more room here. Click on the first component, 72300. Second component, 72305. Both of these event callbacks are wired to the same handler, right? But this one says this is the first component, and this is the second component. So these are dynamically created. Now, why do you need dynamic components? Well, you might not. But one reason is at design time, you might not know what the types and parameters are. So that means your components can be completely data-driven. That becomes very important if we're going to move on to the next step. And the next step is what you've been waiting for. This is the clickbait, folks. Dynamically loading RCLs. So using my dynamic Blazor component loader NuGet package, you can support reloading new versions of an RCL just by copying the DLL to an arbitrary folder, one that you create. Typically, ASP.NET Core locks loaded DLLs, preventing them from being copied over. However, I've cracked the code, so to speak, to getting around this limitation. So for this demo, we're going to add a folder to the RCL demo app and use the Dynamic Blazor Component Loader's DLL watch service to monitor changes to that folder. Then we'll use the Dynamic Component Loader to unload the current version and load the new version all instantaneously, boom, it just happens. So step one is to install the NuGet package. Let's go to RCL demo and go to manage NuGet packages. And I'm going to search for dynamic blazer component loader. There it is. Install it. Now step two, I'm going to do it app razor. I'm going to turn off pre-rendering because I don't like it. Okay, next, I'm going to go back to my underscore imports and add that namespace. Next, I'm going to create a folder under RCL demo. I'm going to call it temp DLLs. Now you can call it whatever you want. Now, here's a tip. If you're going to go publish this to Azure, make sure that there's something in that folder or else it might not get published. So I just like to do this. Add a new item, notes.txt. Hey, doesn't matter what it is. Now there's something in that folder. It's not a DLL, but it doesn't matter. If you go to publish, it ensures that that folder will be copied. Next, we have to configure and register these services in program CS. We're still in the RCL demo here, folks. All right, so we have a DLL watcher options, which is part of my library, and it takes the watch path. And what I do is I combine the base directory, which comes from app context base directory, and uh, appends temp DLLs to it. So that is the temp DLL path. That's the watch path for these watcher options. And then we add singletons, dynamic component loader and DLL watcher service. Remember, this one watches this folder for new DLLs, and this one actually loads the new DLL and unloads the old one. And I say DLLs, they're assemblies, right? DLL is the file extension, but these are .NET Core assemblies. Now, in true form, we're going to take over weather because I'm too lazy to create a page and add a nav menu for it. So let's take a look at this. We still have the dynamic component here. We're only doing one, so I don't have a list of them. I'm only, I've only got one. But take a look here. I've got a dynamic component type. That's a type. And I have a single dictionary of string object, which are the component parameters. I got a message, which I'm going to show right here. I get the temp folder path, right? And on initialized, I say I want the DLL watcher, which is injected here, DLL watcher service and the dynamic component loader are both injected. I want the DLL watcher on DLL changed action to call my reload component. Reload component calls load components. 
load components, figures out where to load the DLL from. If it's in the temp folder, it loads that one. If there's nothing in the temp folder, it loads it from the base directory, which is the bin folder or the bin.net8 debug folder, whatever, right? So either way, I've got a DLL path. It's either in the temp folder or in the base directory. And then I create my dynamic component type, right? And that's loader.load component type. This actually loads the assembly. Here's the temp folder path. Here's the DLL path and the class, my RCL.my component. And then I set the parameters just like before, the message and the button clicked, right? And I do a UI refresh. So remember, this happens whenever a new MyRCL DLL is copied into that temp folder, into that uh, temp DLLs folder. And I have to invoke async on this because it's not on the UI thread. I learned that the hard way. Okay, everything else here is as it should be. So let's see what happens here. How can we test this? Well, right now, my component says it's version 1. So we'll just verify that. Go to the weather page. There it is, dynamically loaded, version 1.0. Now I'm going to keep this running. Go back to Visual Studio, and I'm going to open up a command prompt in this folder. So this is my RCL folder. So if I do a dir, you can see there's my component razor. I'm going to edit it with Notepad. There it is, string version 1.0. I'll change that to 1.1. And might as well change the text too. Hello again from my component version at version. So now I've changed markup and code. Now I'm going to do .NET build. Let's take a look here. Let's go into the bin directory, to the debug directory, to the net 8.0 directory. Oops. CD net 8.0. And there is my RCL DLL. Now what I'm going to do is just do a copy command, copy my RCL.dll. And now I need the path of the temp DLLs folder in the RCL demo project. RCL demo bin debug net 8.0 temp DLLs. One file's copied, and there it is right there. Hello again from my component version 1.1, and the event handler still works. So this is a nice little tool. It's open source. You can take a look at the source code. And um, the, the secret sauce is loading the assembly by a byte array. So I use the file system to load it into a byte array, and then I have a method that loads the assembly from that byte array. I think this is a great improvement uh, to Blazor, and I know of at least three customers of mine that are going to be using it, and you can too. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. So when replacing a component while it's in use, it'd be wise to save any state owned by the component before reloading and load the state after reloading. A good pattern is to keep the state in a separate component. See my application state tutorials, Blazor Train episode 15, application state in Blazor.net 8, and or my app state GitHub repo, github.com slash Carl Franklin slash app state server. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blazor Train!